We're in the lab today. We've got another box. Jordan sprinted from the downstairs break room up the stairs to the FedEx guy at the door, which is probably the fastest you've run in some time. Oh, that, wasn't, that wasn't meant to be offensive. I'm just... I don't know. Maybe you were chased by a moose in Canada. I don't know. Maybe you've For the record, this. I tackled the intern because he was walking away with my box. He, he was touching it. So Jordan's <laughs> excited because we're about to get flexy today. Yes. We've got something really special. Our friends over at Supermicro on the Blade team sent us some Intel Flex 140s to test. All right. And go ahead and crack it open while I will, yeah. I'll narrate. And I'm not allowed to use the Blade anymore. Still, so I've been banned. Uh, the Flex GPUs are really cool, and actually from last year's launch event, this was one of the most intriguing pieces of content we published all year. The uh, interest was super high in these, mostly for VDI use cases, because the way Intel went to market, they went license-free with it. Now, we know that there's a, a lot of question marks around what VMware is going to do with Horizon, but Horizon's not going away. Broadcom's going to allegedly sell, sell. Or, or, uh, sell Horizon, not Verizon. <laughs> Broadcom's going to allegedly sell Horizon to somebody, and we'll see what happens from there. But the biggest trick is around the lack of licensing for these GPUs in Horizon uh, VDI deployments. And that's got a lot of organizations very excited about the potential for these cards. Now, you've seen these before. I have. I've actually gotten to hold these at a few trade shows. I've been begging for them for quite some time. I'm really happy to have it. It's kind of a, it's got some heft to it. Yeah, snag there. the other one. Look, there's one for each of us. Yeah, one for each of us. Great. Uh, they stand out initially as single slot width, which is, yep. which is nice. Um, they no do have PCI Express power on the back because they require 150 watts to operate. But 150 ain't not, that bad no, not in the when GPU you consider, world. consider, right, especially when you consider the, uh, hang on. You can set My it. cheat sheet. No, okay. I don't want them to see I'm cheating. They, especially when you consider the performance of these things. So for 150 watts, you're getting 32 of Intel's XE cores. They've got eight render slicers. There's 32 ray tracing units in here. Um, their XE matrix extension, which is something that we're still yet to explore. I guess there's 512 of those engines in there. And the Intel matrix extension, the dynamic clock on there will go up to 1950 megahertz. So there's 16 gigabytes of GDDR5 in here. And the way that, that and the special thing about these is the way you can slice them up with Horizon. You can slice these into uh, eight VMs per card. So combined with the Blade servers that we're gonna put these into, we've got some 32 core uh, Emerald Rapids in there. That'll balance really well for the amount of VDIs that you can put. And those are graphic accelerated VDIs right. that you can put per Blade. So you're talking about a really awesome density story. Well, it does highlight the overall value of the Blade chassis. It's behind me here, I don't know. Uh... Uh, it's the ones with the two wires hanging out. That's the ones we're going to put it in. <laughs> I, I was thinking about if I was going to yank one out or not. Yeah, let's grab one. But this does highlight overall the value of the blade chassis and the blades because now, the first time we looked at this, we had H100s in the four GPU nodes. Right. And we're using a total of five of the 10 slots with yeah. these double wide half high blades. But now if we're an organization that went to the blade chassis and our needs have changed, or we want to do graphics enabled VDI, yeah. the, the modular blades are really great for that use case. Getting eight users with graphic accelerated VMs in, in a this. chassis that's this footprint is kind of crazy. And like I said, a lot of that comes down to the footprint and the power inside the uh, Intel Flex data centers. Yeah, and uh, that'll be the fun part with that. When we get those in, it'll be kind of nice having a lower power part in here just yeah. to see how these blades react to that versus wh whatever, was it 400, 375 on yeah, the H100? 350 or 400 watts. Something yeah. like that on the H100s that uh, were quite the screamers. Um, but yeah, you want to crack these open and get the GPUs inside? Yeah, let's get these installed in both of our blades and uh, from there we'll uh, get ESXi installed and configure up Horizon and do some workstation testing. Cool, let's do it. All right. We got our Intel Flex 170 data center GPUs ready to install into our Supermicro Super Blades. I got one here, I got one just off camera there. We'll go ahead and install both. We will need the uh, power adapter from Supermicro. This goes from the uh, the smaller kind of board power to regular PCI Express. 
and that allows us to power that allows us to power that doesn't allow us to power okay we're back after a brief false alarm on the uh, power connectors there we had some boxes mislabeled downstairs so got our blade out we've got our Intel flex GPUs here we've got PCI power adapters properly plugged in now ready to go getting into these guys is pretty easy and straightforward so there's one screw right here that I took out and then there's one straight down through this hole and then with a gentle nudge the entire top will come off so this is the 12 VHP power from previous testing. We don't need these for this. And then this PCI bracket, the entire thing will come out with one screw. Actually relatively easy if you know what you're doing and can see all of the screws. Once that's out, there's our X16 slot. And there's a little retention clip right here. Flex will drop right in. Get that fully seated. Retention bracket goes in. PCI Express carrier goes back down. Our big screw. I'm going to tuck these kind of around. So we're not obstructing airflow. And this little tiny itty bitty connector. Use the same one. It looks like there's provisions for another one in here if you needed it. So there's still plenty of room. I know it looks like there's a lot, but there's plenty of room underneath. This is kind of suspended here behind the card. The card will get the fresh air from the front of the blade and the CPU will be able to get fresh air through here. Line our baffling. All right, retained, two screws to go back in. And that's it. That's how easy it is to service one of these blades. So it's not quite as you know clunky and point and clicky as some other things, but it's really easy. Two screws to get the chassis open if you need a service, and then two more screws to service the PCI Express port. There is our Intel Flex GPU installed in a blade. All right, on this, I went ahead and pre-removed the two screws on the side. They're just off to the uh, my right here. All right, so we got two blades with Intel Flex GPUs in them. Let's get these put back into the blade chassis. So we're back with the Intel Flex. You've been yeah. working on this for the last several weeks. And from what I can tell, the best thing you did was have the intern print out a foot. Well, yes, now we don't have to worry about the very expensive, hard to get GPU falling over. Okay, thanks for tuning in. That's the takeaway. We'll uh, publish the, uh, the Thinkiverse file link at the, in the video description, and you two can print out a little foot for your GPU. Yeah. Did you accomplish anything else? I did, I got some okay. testing done. Good, and here's the challenge. With now a few GPUs out there from NVIDIA, obviously yeah. the market leader, but uh, AMD and obviously Intel too, what is going on with the variety of GPUs and where did you find strengths with this particular one? So specifically the coolest part about the Flex GPUs is the open nature of the driver. You don't have to license your VDIs or your virtual machines that you use. Mm -hmm. uh, and you can use uh, SRIO V on here in order to basically slice it up into as many chunks as you want up to 32 per Flex 170. Right. And you don't have to pay a licensing. So NVIDIA has licensing fees associated with that where Intel doesn't. So what that means is setting the upfront cost aside, right. the GPU isn't gonna cost you any extra money down the line. Operationally. Right. Right. Um, and it also opens the source for, <laughs> it opens the source for the door. Uh, it opens the door for a lot of open source options or potentially different hypervisor options that maybe wouldn't previously work with the Intel GPU. One thing that I found that was really interesting, and we used VMware in our testing because that's yep. what Intel did on their white paper. So we kind of wanted to go after that and validate that. And we did, we, we accomplished it. But I think the takeaway that I had was the painlessness of the actual driver installation. Intel's uh, documentation that comes with the zip file when you download the driver mm -hmm. 
extremely well written, easy to follow. Up to date? Up to date. Because sometimes they'll do that once and then three, four, six months later, you're trying to do something and all the references are now broken or yeah. out of date or whatever. This was just a flat text file in the driver and it said, this is how you do it. So drivers were easy. The manageability was just as easy too. Slicing it up on uh, ESX, for instance, right. was as simple as selecting a drop down and going from zero to 31 in order to select how many slices you want. Um, I've got it on good authority that in some of the open source options that we're uh, starting to explore, uh, it's just as simple. Okay. Once the driver is there, it's pretty easy. I, man, even just over remote desktop, not using any sort of our like our accelerated capture like Parsec or anything like that. Right. Just over remote desktop, you could tell the difference in the responsiveness of the VM, right? Because normal VMware is software encoding and software sure. acceleration. Sure. There's other tricks and stuff that you can do, especially when you start getting into Horizon and thin clients and delivery optimization. Okay, we'll, we'll talk about that for a minute. Because yeah. I know Tom, who's our end user computing expert, one of the foremost leading experts in the industry yeah. on this, he was totally jacked over the concept yeah. of being able to, as you say, license free, yeah. allocate uh, GPUs to 32 uh, thin clients or VMs, right. basically VDI instances. And that's really cool. When I get to the end user bit of that, as a consumer of that VM, right. across, you know, sending pixels across the line to a thin client somewhere, it feels good, is that? Yeah, if we set all the technical stuff aside, just interacting with the VM, even over like, our, like I said, just a basic RDP, was so much more pleasant because windows would move smoother, things would uh, minimize and maximize better, websites Especially would if scroll. Especially if you're doing heavier work on If those. you're using Word and Excel and stuff like that, the modern apps are getting so bloated and need so much in the back end. Even just using Office applications was That's a lot That's why all easier. the new silicon is AI enabled with <laughs> NPUs and AI cores. We because can't say AI with this, but yeah. <laughs> Right. <laughs> Point being, the workloads are getting much more intensive. Things, Even the yeah. basic office apps that used to run on almost anything are getting a little heavier, a right. lot heavier. So that brings us to two really interesting use case kind of scenarios with this. With the ability to slice it to 32, you could put 32 users on one of these. Right. We've got our 32 core CPU, so yeah. everybody gets a couple threads. Everybody gets 512 megabytes of graphics. Uh, it's you're not going to be streaming YouTube, you're not going to be playing games, but your office apps are going to work a little better. Windows is going to work a little better for you. So just purely from an enjoyment perspective, in my opinion, the organizations that take that on, it is well worth the cost. But when we start talking about, okay, 32 is not the only operand we can put in there for okay. slicing this. We can go 16 or eight or four and we can give you more horsepower up to one? the point. How about one? One was pretty cool. <laughs> you did thing, do one, I did you? do one. I did do one. Uh, yes, it will run Crisis. Um, at, uh, at eight slices, so two gigabytes per user mm -hmm. on the card, right? Uh, I was able to get some uh, very good results from our productivity testing. Uh, we'll throw those up on the screen right now uh, versus the uh, different sizes. But at that two gigabyte chunk size, I mean, even then, I had to. It was late night. You weren't watching me. I was able to get Untitled Goose Game running pretty smooth right. over the wire, uh, no hiccups, anything like that. So, yes, from an office productivity standpoint, if you have more power users and you're doing some CAD work or you're doing a little bit of stuff that maybe needs a little bit more. Yeah, Minesweeper. Yeah, all of the Minesweeper. Maybe, maybe CAD if it was some light sort of thing, if you're just right. auditing or viewing files and you needed some sort of rendering to be able to do it, it's not your everyday CAD thing when you slice that small. Right. But when you start talking about slicing this for two or even just four users, there's actually more than enough power here. These XC cores are really awesome. Well, and we filmed the, the first part of this a month ago when this came right. in, and, and I, to be honest, I can't remember how much time we spent on this the first time, but we uh, we should not skate past the concept of using that GPU in the Supermicro Superblades. Right. Because you talk about the flexibility that this offers for VDI, and that's really important, but you may not need a server full of eight of these cards because right. you, you know, you've got user counts that you're trying to hit. This configurable Superblade system lets us sort of dedicate these blades to yeah. a specific task, which is 
the VDI users, accelerated VDI users. Yeah, in this blade. blade. Yeah, and we've done H100s in these blades, which are great for training or big inferencing yeah. loads, which are totally different than what's going on with this card. These things, and they're kind of shaped like it a little bit, and they've got the little. They're kind of like a little Swiss Army knife for the data center. Honestly, like there's. Is that the spoon? Have you been using I, that? Deep? Kevin probably ate spaghettios. I think with he that. eats the spaghettios <laughs> with that. We're kidding, Super Micro. Um, We're not kidding. <laughs> no, it. it, it and if you have blade chassis, right, or if you're if you're a medium sized or small business sized shop, mm -hmm. and you kind of need the flexibility of you want your stuff centralized in the data center for some reason, whether it's application security reasons, manageability, or it's just easier for everybody to bring their own laptop and remote into the company data, you could have some of these packed with you know big fat two U GPUs. Sure. You could have some VDI guys going on on some of these flex GPUs. Or just and, jam twin CPUs in there and yeah, go, for, go for the cores, and, right? And call it and run that on your app servers and your database servers in the single wides, right? So the flexibility that the chassis affords is is quite astounding. It's diverse. So we've got a paper on this that we'll link to already, and we'll have a, uh, a yeah. detailed report on the Intel Flex GPU as well. We'll link to that too. Right, so if you want to check out the full benchmark results from this, we've got them in the, on the site. We did PC Mark 10 for our uh, office productivity and then as much kind of the 3D rendering as we can get on those slices. Again, this is more focused uh, for this level, this round of testing rather, was more focused for office productivity and how would you deploy this in the real world, in a business, and what's the impact to the end users? I can stand here all day and say, hey, it was a lot easier to use, and some people probably believe me, but we have the numbers to back it up too yeah. on the site. Easier, uh, less expensive. Yes. Point being is that there's a thousand GPUs out there and accelerators, right. and it's understanding your workloads and finding the right tools to make it work. Mm -hmm. And so far we're having a great time with this Intel GPU and the Supermicro rig we've been testing with. I'm sure you've got much more planned, and we'll be back with more content around these things. Yeah, the other one's still on the server. We're going to be playing around with that one for a little bit. Uh, we might be getting some bigger versions of these to uh -oh. put in here. Uh -oh. uh, the Max. Uh, so those will be those will be coming down the pipe hopefully soon. But uh, yeah, Intel Flex 170. If it's the uh, the tool that you need, it's unbeatable. All right. Thanks for tuning in. Check out the Discord to keep in touch with everything we've got going on in the lab and maybe even remote into this bad boy if you want to play yourself. Thanks for tuning in. See ya.